I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend narrating a movie as you're walking up a mountain. Hiya, Josh here. So today I'm walking up a mountain because I created a new sled for the snow. I did this two years ago and the sled performed pretty well, but I had some things I wanted to change. Let me start walking you through my design process on this new sled. I call these sleds ski sleds. And the reason for that is, is that they're literally built on old skis. And this allows them to float on the snow. They also go very quickly. And plus, old skis are really cheap to find. Last year, the whole point of the sled was to be very strong and to have suspension and then steering. And it's steered by tipping the skis left and right uh, to go around the corner. That kind of worked pretty well. However, I had mounted the pivot points too far from the center of the ski, which meant that when you tip the ski on the side, it wouldn't fully go into a carve along the side cut. And I decided, well, hey, a skier, their boot is about a foot long. And so if I put the pivots at that length, when we tip on the side, we should go into a carve, which is what we want. So I implemented that on the new design. The second thing I did was rearrange the steering. So on the old sled, when I would turn the steering, it would push tie rods on the front of the handlebar that were attached to the front of the skis. This would not only tip the ski, but flex a little bit. However, and those are really thin portions of the ski, meaning that it flexed a little bit too much. And so it wasn't very precise. Another problem with the tie rods in front of the handlebar was that when I would hit really big bumps, they would actually pinch my fingers between the tie rods and the handlebar. That wasn't too fun. So to fix these issues, I ended up moving the steering behind the handlebar and running it internal inside the box tube. This allows a large part of the steering to be inside the sled. What's exposed is very minimal and it also is very precise because we're directly attaching to the ski pivots. When I was designing this sled, I designed it in AutoCAD to get all of the dimensions and everything correct before I build it. And it helps a ton to see exactly what it's gonna be like before I even cut anything. I always wanna use standard hardware, fasteners and aluminum tubes, stuff like that. Just so it's easy to build because I'm not a machinist. I use McMaster.com. They can give you all kinds of different interesting hardware and tubing. And as I designed it, I kept that in mind and made sure I used things that were available. So that's how I ended up designing this sled and I will see you guys in the next one. That's it.